ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆರ್ ಎನ್ ಅಯ್ಯಂಗಾರ್ ಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟು ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ವಾಚಿಂಗ್ ದ ರಿಷಿವಾಟಿಕ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ಚಾನಲ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ವೆಂಕಟ ರಾಘವನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ವೈದಿಕ್ ಸೈನ್ಸಸ್ ಐ ಐ ವಿ ಎಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಹೋಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಗುರುರ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರುರ್ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವೇದವ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮೆಮೋರಿಯಲ್ ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ವೈದಿಕ್ ಸೈನ್ಸಸ್ ರಿಷಿವಾಟಿಕ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಮೋಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ವೇದವ್ಯಾಸ ಭಾರತಿ ಟ್ರಸ್ಟ್ ಯುಸ್ ಕೆಫಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯೋಗ ಬ್ರದರ್ಹುಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಮೆರಿಕ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರಿವಿಲೇಜ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆರ್ ಎನ್ ಅಯ್ಯಂಗಾರ್ ಜಿ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಆನ್ ಪರಾಶರ ತಂತ್ರ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ಒನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಟಾಕ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಪರಾಸರ ತಂತ್ರ ಏನ್ಷಿಯಂಟ್ ಸಾಂಸ್ಕ್ರಿಟ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಆನ್ ಆಸ್ಟ್ರಾನಮಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲ್ ಸೈನ್ಸಸ್ ಎ ರೀಕನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನೋಟ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಆರ್ ಎನ್ ಅಯ್ಯಂಗಾರ್ ಜಿ ಈಸ್ ಅನ್ ಅಚೀವ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಜರ್ನಿ ಆಫ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ವೆಸ್ಟಿಗೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಆಫ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಐ ನೌ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆರ್ ಎನ್ ಅಯ್ಯಂಗಾರ್ ಜಿ ಟು ಡೆಲಿವರ್ ಟುಡೇ ಸ್ಟಾಕ್ ಫೋರ್ ಟು ಯು ಸರ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ವೆಂಕಟ ರಾಘವನ್ let me say namaste to all the people present for listening the lecture sir are you able to see and hear the slide yes sir please okay okay fine the name of parashara is so important for all of us and you know the name of the institute the vedavyasa institute and the veda vyasa memorial lecture is equally important and equally interesting to me just now i heard that there is a vishnu sahasrama program also that is running and and that gives me immense pleasure because our ancients connected the sky with the earth and with ourselves and with the spiritual upliftment of humanity so it gives me great pleasure today to be with you what i will do is in the next about 45 50 minutes i will give you a brief birds eye view of this text sir if i, I take about 50 minutes is it okay yes sir please and, and you can stop me if the time is uh, no no worries sir. please please take your time okay. um <clears throat> See, I have been interested since my childhood in reading Sanskrit texts because my basic education happened in the Sanskrit part Shala in Mysore. But I had put all of this in limbo till 1993 when an earthquake occurred in India. It's called the Latour earthquake in September 1993. Now, there are so many new questions crops up with earthquakes. It's a, a modern scientific subject and... Uh, you know the host being in california i need not explain the importance of earthquakes for the safety of uh, towns and <clears throat> infrastructure the earthquake has all depends on history of earthquakes actually uh, that is going to be in a region or in a country and it is not only true about earthquakes but also floods droughts rainfall and any natural phenomena we have to have a long history then only we can understand the present situation so i started looking at in 1993 for past earthquakes in india so the, the easiest reference is of course varaha mihra brahmad samhita 6th century but if you read brahmad samhita carefully along with the commentary of batotpala you need to you notice that varaha is only repeating what his predecessor said his predecessors were parashara vridha garga garga kashyapa asita devala and a few others so this made me wonder what was these people doing in the more period more ancient than varahme that means already 2000 years ago so parashara attracted my attention but what happens is his 
uh, texts are given, quoted by Bhattopala and others. Bhattopala, the commentator on uh, Brahad Samhita, he was in 10th century. Varahamihira, let us say, he was 5th and 6th century. Then we have another book in the 12th century called Adbhuta Sagara by Ballala Sena, who was a king in Mithila. He also quotes Parashara Tantra extensively. And I was wondering how to get the original manuscript of Parashara Tantra. But this did not happen. So at least we know that till about 12th century or 13th century, Parashara Tantra manuscripts were available in this country. But unfortunately, I could not get the original manuscript. I'm still searching for it. And hence, <coughs> I decided I will collect all the information that is available about scientific texts attributed to Parashara and bring out a book. And once I collected and then analyzed the information, this is if somebody gives a commentary in 5th century, somebody says something in 10th century, comparing them and contrasting them becomes difficult. So I put all of them together. And then it turned out that uh, Parashara should have been at least his uh, tradition, the scientific tradition, should have started somewhere in 1400 BC, maybe plus or minus 100 years. And this is actually, as you would see, is a glaring variance as it is taught in our schools and all that. And hence, it made me to bring out the book in a published forum. So in 2013, I brought out this it's an ancient Sanskrit text on astronomy and natural sciences, combining all the information that is published already in the commentaries of Utpala, Ballad Sena, and one more commentator by name Bhaskar Yogi, South Indian commentator on Varahamira. And then uh, it turned out that this book was of interest not only to me, but several other history of scientists. It's a famous uh, scientist by name Dr. Bevi Subraipa, who is no more, he passed away last year. He has considered the dying of Indian science, history of science in India. He was also the president of the International Union of History of Science and Philosophy for quite some time. And I requested him to write a foreword and he went through the text and said, agreed, that there is very something very special in this text. First is, a list of 26 comets, that is Dhuma Ketu. Ketu nowadays, you know, astrologers use it in some other sense. But in the more ancient time, even in Varahamira's time, Ketu meant only a comet, not the descending lunar node. We have to keep that in mind. But later on, I will show some of the texts. And not only that, uh, Parashara discusses about the visibility of Agastya. Agastya is the southern star Canopus. And Parashara was the first to correctly state the visibility periods of Venus in the east and west. And he also gives so many other things. We'll quickly see that. And so Dr. Subrayapa was very much impressed with this. And he said that this is something about pre Aryabhata astronomy. As you know, mathematical astronomy is supposed to have started with Aryabhata or maybe a couple of centuries before him. Um, and there are so many controversies about it, whether it's influenced by Greek, whether it's influenced by Babylonians and other things. But this text, whatever is available to us as Parashara Tantra, is pre aryabhatan or it is before the Common Era. It belongs to the uh, time, uh, what you can say, BCE. And then this was released in 2013. And you may, some of you may recognize, so the second from the left is uh, Dr. Subraipa, and the center is Professor Narsima, Rodam Narsima, who passed away, a great scientist, just uh, uh, two months back. His interest was also in trying to understand the ancient science, what ex existed, what was the relationship between Vedas and Siddhantic astronomy. Nobody who re, uh, no, goes through astronomy, Siddhantic astronomy text, 
can say that everything is Greek or uh, Latin, things like that. No, it is not like that. There are so many things which been which has come down from the Vedic period. What it is, what was the link in between, that has remained a big question mark. In fact, Parashara fills up that. The name of Parashara and one more person by name Vridha Garga is quite well known. Even Panini refers to Garga and uh, Mahabharata refers to both Garga and Parashara as astronomers or uh, somebody who knew about the Utpata Lakshana. Even in Mahabharata, of course, Garga's name comes. And in many of the later Siddhantic astronomy texts, both Parashara and Vridha Garga are quoted. The very important thing is all the astronomers, uh, Aryabhata, Brahmagupta, Lalla, and even later ones, they all refer to Agastya, Agastya Chara. Without Agastya, there is no astronomy in this country. Let us understand that. They may be working on planets and all that more, but Agastya has to be one of the chapters. How did they get information? And Agastya is, of course, the Vedic Rishi. And what was the connection between Vedic uh, period of observation of the sky and the later people was one of the important questions. Now, I organized this book before I go to the uh, actual text and uh, determination of the chronology and time. I want to show the contents here. Uh, I have organized this as per Brahat Samhita only. Because, you know, Utpala's information is available only as comments to Varahamira. So, Parasharena Muktam and all that he says in each Adhyaya separately, if there is something about Parashara. And hence, I thought the better way is to organize it as per that so that one can do a comparison easily. You see, Upanayana is a prologue, Samvatsara is the fundamentals, then comes Aditya Chara. Even in Bharat Samhita, the third chapter is Aditya, then Moon, then Rahu, then Bauma, that is Mars, then Mercury, that is Buddha, then Brahaspati, then Shukra, then Shanaishchara. Well, please note, this is the order in which Varaha Mehira is organized. This was not the Vedic order. Vedic order would have been after Sun, Shukra would come. Let us not get into that. Now, we proceed further. Then, of course, the Ketu Chara on comets, then Agastya. And then uh, astral geography, the Nakshatropa Sarga. This Nakshatropa Sarga is not, not available in uh, Varahamira's text. This means Nakshatra occultations and afflictions. He refers to some of that as potents here and there, but there is no separate chapter. But you can see this Nakshatropa Sarga is very important and it is available in uh, the text by Balal Sena. About 25 pages of that is given here. Similarly, you know, Ketuchara is about 25 pages. So these are all very important ones. And then this Grahayuddha, Grahayuddha is planetary conjunctions. This is one of the primary things which would, which has eventually led to Indian astrology. We will see that. Then Titi Karana Mukurta is a short chapter. Then, you know, on rainfall, rainfall is very detailed. And then about earthquakes. So this earthquake, is from where Varahamihira and others have taken their information. Then Ulkapata, Pratisurya, these are all atmospheric phenomena. And then, you know, dreams and divinations, it's called Manushan, and there is a miscellany. You can see there is about 260 pages. So it's a uh, large book. Uh, are you able to hear or there is some disturbance? No, there is a background disturbance, but we are able to hear you clearly, sir. Please go ahead. Okay, oh, all right. So the uh, Parashara Tantra was reconstructed this way. I will skip this slide. Uh, I have given the sources from where I have taken all of this. But there is no critical edition, good critical edition, either on Brahat Samhita or on Utpala's Vivarti. That is something which is still to be done. So if Utpala's uh, critical edition is available, then Parashar Tantra, some of these statements may change, but not too much, but only here and there in the Vibhakti, Pratyaya and other things. Now, the Aditya Chara is the one which gives us information about the uh, date when uh, th this might have been observed. Please note, these texts were all oral from the Vedic period. Then, somewhere 
in the turn of the common era, somebody took the interest to fix them in writing, maybe on palm leaf or whatever. Then they were transmitted every 300 years or so on another palm leaf. Then finally something has come and in the 18th century or 19th century, they were all printed in books. So we are having only printed books. Why I am telling this? If you see, there are three statements here. Sir, there is a lot um, of background knowledge. Sorry, my fan was making too much of noise. Oh, okay. I thought I would stop it. Okay. So you can see there are three uh, statements about the uh, solar transit movement of sun. Uh, I will read it. Shravishtadya paushnantan charataha shishiraha vasantaha paushnanta trohinyantam Now, in 1790, you know about William Jones. So William Jones is considered the person who introduced Sanskrit to Europe and he's a very famous man. He gives in uh, one of his publications, Ravishtadya Poshnar Dantan Charataha Shishiraha, same statement, the wordings are different. But the important thing is, he says, this is in the commentary of the Utpala's commentary, William Jones' version of Utpala's commentary. He says that he saw a palm leaf manuscript in Calcutta and this palm leaf manuscript, this statement was marked with Vedic accents. That is Udata Anuata Swarita, this statement was marked. Now I could not get that uh, manuscript and I wrote to some people in uh, UK trying to find out William Jones materials are available, but I didn't succeed. If it is so, these statements are all Vedic statements. In fact, they sound like Vedic Brahmana statements, Brahmana texts, they uh, would read something like this. Later on also, in the prose of Parashara, you would see a lot of such statements. But I can't go into the linguistic details here, but I will uh, concentrate only on the astronomical details. What this means, sun moves from beginning of Shravishta to the middle of Revati, it is Shishira or winter season. Now, Shishira is, the, the winter season is when the, uh, you know, the winter solstice starts and then he gives six positions for the seasons. All the six seasons are discussed, not as the Siddhantic astronomers would do, like the Mesha, Vrishabha, Mesha Masa and, the, and Rashis. This is in terms of only the six seasons in terms of the nakshatras. And one can, uh, this is what may be called the seasonal zodiac. Now, this word zodiac has attracted so much of attention. And uh, if you see some of the history of astronomy, Indian astronomy, particularly as written by Westerners, they will say, oh, the Vedic people did not know solar zodiac. They knew only the lunar zodiac of 28 days for the moon to be with the nakshatras. And the solar zodiac, actually the Rashi system, were borrowed by either Babylonians or the Greeks. That is with their contention. But you would see that before the 12, there was a six season zodiac. These six seasons can be re easily equated to 12, which has been done later by Vridhagarga. Parashara did not do that. Later, Vridhagarga has done, but I have no time to go into that. We are editing the Vridhagarga Jyotisha. Maybe sometime I can talk about it. What this says, I have given a circle here. You can see that. I have marked the Ritus and the Sharat Ritu and the Vasanta is here. And this is 270 degrees. That is the winter solstice where the Dhanishta or the Shravishtadi would start. And he gives all these stars uh, in a way, all the 27. The table is here. I can't go into all the details of that. They did not have the equal division table, or at least he has not said that in the text. But what he says is this, this special nakshatras, nakshatra, Dhanishta, Rohini, Rohini, Revati, they were all visible. So the visible nakshatras I have marked here. These nakshatras are marked. So when were these nakshatras, with reference to this uh, 270 degrees, were visible to naked eye in that particular season, that is in this interval, 
is what I have worked out. So you can see Kritika will be between 3 degrees to 16 degrees. That is measured from the some corresponding zero point. Actually, take 270. Then, you know, Barani somewhere here, it will become 360. So this was a period when it was the Barani, Barani Adi system. It was not the Kritika Adi system had been finished. It was something where the equinox was in Barani. The zero point is in Barani. But anyway, if uh, without making any assumption about Dhanishta, what is Dhanishta nakshatra has been a big controversy. Now, if I identify Dhanishta with Beta Delphini, as it is normally done for dating particularly Lagada's Vedanga Jyotisha and dating Lagada to 1400 BC, we get into some problems. Uh, in fact, uh, many have po uh, pointed it out, particularly one Professor Abhyankar, who was Professor of Astronomy in Usmania University, he has pointed these things out quite well. So in uh, our text also, there is some confusion between what is Shravishta and what is Dhanishta. Later on, uh, Amarukosha and others say they are Paryayipadas. Later means in, from 400 AD or so. But we are considering a period of so around 1500 BC so, and in the Vedas, Dhanishta is never used. It is only Shravishta which you would see in uh, either in the Taitiriya Samhita or in any other uh, Samhita. And in any case, without assuming Dhanishta to be Beta Delphini, I worked out the visibility of Kritika, Rohini, Maga, Chitra, Vishaka, and Jeshta. These are non controversial stars. Even today, you can identify them. Whereas, if somebody asks you to point out Uttara Shada, or even Dhanishta, uh, Shravishta of the Vedic period, it becomes very difficult because, you know, Abhijit has been dropped from the 28 nakshatra list and hence there are going to be some difficulties. Anyway, uh, we will uh, uh, skip those uh, details and you can see the visibility period I have marked here. And if all these stars were to be visible in a given year, that period becomes 1350 to 1130 BCE. So the solar zodiac, it was a six division solar zodiac. Solar zodiac means the movement of sun with reference to nakshatra, not movement of moon, but movement of sun. This is called the solar nakshatra, which is very important for the rutus and rainfall and all meteorological uh, applications later on. This comes to be between 1350 and 1130, which is nearly the same as what you can say that uh, 1400 BC or so, what people are telling for the Vedanta Jyotisha. Now, there are new questions which crop up. Namely, there are not only 27 nakshatras, there are actually 83 stars. Each nakshatra, for example, Kritika is made up of six stars, Rohini is made up of five stars, Mrigashira of three, and then you can see Maga is made up of six stars like that. So if you take all the 83 stars, what happens was another question. This also we've been working out recently. The error between considering 27 stars and 83 stars is not too much. We can find out uh, by a mathematical principle that is minimizing the error. So the, the error will reach a minima still around 1300, 1400 BC. And the visibility period for Parashara statements, what I got between 1350 and 1100 or 1110 uh, is reasonably correct. In other words, the tradition of Parashara Tantra goes to the, at least towards the end of the Vedic period. The, that would call what people would call the Vedanga period. And in fact, I have to recognize that Parashara was the first Vedanga Jyotishi. Then only the others come. Nowadays, there is a wrong opinion that Vedanga Jyotisha means only Lagadas, Archa Jyotisha, and uh, Yajusha Jyotisha. There is no title that is called Vedanga Jyotisha for that. Anything which part and parcel of Vedas, if there are observational results about the what the Vedic uh, Samhitas have said, that would be called Vedanga. Now, anyway, next you see the important thing is about eclipses. The eclipses also give us some idea about when Parashara might have been might have started this. A very important statement in Rahuchara is the following: Shanmasa Chandramasaha Tato Ardashashte Ityadicha 
ఆదిత్య స్యాపి పూజిత మహుర్ ఆచార్య హీ డజంట్ సే దట్ ఐ సా దట్ బట్ హిస్ ఆచార్య హిస్ టీచర్స్ పరాశర టీచర్స్ లెట్ అస్ ఏ పరాశర వాస్ సమ్ ఋషి ఆర్ సమ్ టీచర్ హూ వాస్ దేర్ అరౌండ్ థర్టీన్ హండ్రెడ్ బిసి ఆర్ సో హిస్ టీచర్స్ మైట్ హ్ బీన్ అనదర్ హండ్రెడ్ ఇయర్స్ బిఫోర్ మైట్ హ్ సెట్ దట్ um lunar eclipses occur at a very six month interval which in fact is correct the modern astronomy also agrees with that and ardha shashta that is from there tatah ardha shashta from there five and a half months aditya yeah after the uh, uh, lunar eclipse five and a half months later comes amavasya because chandra uh, eclipse would be only in purnima so you have to have not integral numbers but half numbers five and half then aditya eclipse may also occur he also says there are visandhi grahana visandhi grahana would be unusual or which are not at six month interval but why does he say this six month interval there is some relation of this with actually brahmat samhita also brahmat samhita also says there are parvesha saptavida parvesha he says they are called brahmya saumya aindra kaubera varuna and agneya and yamya these are the shanmasa antaritani sapta bhavanti and there are some portents associated with eclipses we will not go into those details but why this seven and in fact nobody has answered this question so far and uh, this is something interesting because th- that number is correct if you see the theory of uh, eclipses there are many modern books by meus panaco and others asnami books uh, they would say that there are two cycles one is the saros the other one is the inex in terms of 235 and 329 uh, lunations and linear combinations of that will give you all eclipses so there is a six monthly eclipse is a possible period but that sequence will stay only for seven that means three and a half years beyond three and a half years it gets broken so that is why people use saros because it continues for a long time up to about 1200 years but anyway th- these were not mathematical astronomy parashara and the vedic period they were observational people who were, who were looking at nature and they were trying to understand science so this is what you can call scientific naturalism nature anybody uh, would be observing and they were very keen observers and then try to find numbers and patterns in that that is how whole of parashara tantra has come to us and very important he gives 10 types of eclipses 10 types of eclipses eclipses even uh, varaha mihira discusses he gives all the 10 uh, names and others but the difference between parashara and uh, varaha mihira is between what you may call ajagajantara now sarva mandala dhuma varna nirodaha tad aroga kshema subhiksha lakshanam is what parashara says sarva mandala dhuma varna means what all of moon would be covered with some kind of haze so you will not be able to see moon is there it is purnima it is not it has not become dark or the color has not changed but it is a dhuma varna whereas varaha mihira i can see in uh, 5.43 in his chapter 5.43 he accepts ten types but he quotes a shloka he writes he doesn't quote he says nirodha is an event in his pindikrita tamaha na at center kendra pindikrita tamaha at the center there should be uh, the darkness is concentrated see that no lunar eclipse is known to be of that kind you will have partial you will have total you have penumbra actually sarva mandala dhuma varna is a total penumbra eclipse and this is a very important thing because later astronomers they are never bothered about total penumbra eclipses they have given uh, eclipse period calculations and all that uh, extraordinarily mathematical and interesting but they never bothered about uh, it's a possibility of penumbra eclipses penumbra can also be part and total in what in mahabharata this penumbral eclipse comes up in the bhishma parva where the total penumbral eclipse moves further and becomes a total lunar eclipse uh, that is uh, um, uh, you know uh, kartikyam purnamasyam it comes alakshya pravayahinah 
ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾಸಿಂಚ ಕಾರ್ತಿಕೇ ತದೋಭವದ್ ಅಗ್ನಿವರ್ಣ ಪದ್ಮವರ್ಣೆ ನಭಸ್ಥಲ ಇಟ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಸ ಟೆಲ್ಸ್ ಏನು ದುರ್ಧರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ದಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಹಿ ಮೇಕ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಯ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಲೂನಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಲಿಪ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಪೆನಂಬರ್ ಎಕ್ಲಿಪ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಮೂನ್ ಡಲ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ದ ಡಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೂನ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಮೆನಿ ಏನ್ಶಿಯಂಟ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬೀನ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಲಿ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟೆಡ್ ಬಟ್ ಪರಾಶರ್ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟೇಶನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಹೌ ಡಿಡ್ ದೇ ನೋ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಲೂನಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಲಿಪ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಮಂತ್ ಇಂಟರ್ವಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಎನಿ ಫೋರ್ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಲೂನಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಲಿಪ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಎ ಟೆಕ್ಟ್ರಾಡ್ and they would occur at a row of 6 months interval you can see wikipedia or any simple astronomy book 6 uh, month interval is what is called a semester eclipse and uh, it is known that such things are possible but there are some peculiarities with this tetra this tetra has become very frequent in a long era about 590 years and then another period of equal length it is very rare it won't occur so that is because of some peculiar orbital motion we're not going to that in astronomy papers these have been discussed in detail so it is the tetra that must have given hint to our ancient observer, observers about the possibility of six monthly repetition so only when there is a large number of tetra you can understand that uh, it, it will occur at six monthly interval at least three or four should be uh, occurring at six monthly interval now you can you have a lot of information nowadays by you know the nasa website by spinar and he also covers the tetrads and the tetrads the number of tetrads per century for 1900 to 500 on bce there were no tetrad in the first two 1900 1800 then there were only three then it would suddenly increase to eight then again it becomes zero zero then again it increase seven seven zero zero like that this gives us a clue that 1400 to 1100 was a lean period that is when parashara's the solar zodiac was formed and then one may wonder before that somebody had uh, his teachers had uh, observed uh, seven eclipses because they did not know mathematical astronomy but they could have observed it so what i did was to work out uh collect all the information about uh, eclipses from espinax table and see which are their seven continuous eclipses yeah, seven continuous eclipses at six month interval total there is a tetrad here also there is a tetrad then after all he says seven he doesn't say they have to be total or they have to be partial he might have even considered dasho upaplava includes also nirodha but it has to be seven that is uh, at six month interval because the parvesha names has also given parvesha sir the region deities of those eclipses at six month interval and you see that there are two series for 1496 uh, -1496 to -1492 again -1442 to -1438 details are available in my book you can verify this you can also download espinax uh, details are available in my book you can verify this you can also download espinax uh, java you know and then find out for any place how many such things might have happened i have taken this for jaipur because parashara was living at pushkar very near jaipur that is why i took it for jaipur and precisely there were seven which were possible so his teachers might also have been living somewhere in rajasthan region because we know that it is the rajasthan aravalli and uh, that pushkara region which was actually the original saraswati river basin and we know that that was brahmavarta and vedic uh, rishis were living in that region now there is uh, something on um, bhauma um, bhauma is uh, mars now parashara doesn't give any numbers on this but he gives the shape he, he discusses ushnam ashrumukam vyalam lohitam nistram mushalam vyala means something which goes back on its own this is you know a vyala kind of formation which i have taken from the retrograde motion very recent uh, data from again from nasa and nistamsha mushalam is this where there is going to be a loop on itself the meaning of nistamsha mushalam if you see the sanskrit dictionaries it says it is a small knife 
a knife which you will know you know the uh, many in north india carry as for religious purposes a small knife you can say a fruit knife you can see this is something like that if they had to give these names they should have observed this in the sky the movement in the sky at least for one or two years or even longer period the uh, at least parashara doesn't give the numbers but later on vridhagar gave the numbers i will not go into that and you come to mercury mercury is considered a very complicated uh, uh, you know planet which was known only later and the the name parashara tantra comes here in fact basamita varahamira quotes this prakrta vimishra sankshipta tikshna yoganta papakya sapta parashara tantra nakshatrai kirtita gataya then uh, you know uh, Utpala comments on this and he says, Yadyapi Ganita Vasaniya Yeta Nopa Paddite, Tatapi Parasharam Angi Kritya Acharyana Uttam. His Acharya is Varahamira and he says, this is not true as per uh, mathematics, but you know, he has simply quoted uh, an ancient teacher, that is Parashara. And the name is Parashara Tantra. It is not Samhita, it is not Siddhanta. In fact, there is a Parashara Siddhanta which is still to be edited. I don't know how... Uh, Uh, you know, ancient it is, but this was called Parashara Tantra. That is why I gave the name Parashara Tantra, because otherwise people would uh, call it Parashara Samhita. And this number of days that they are invisible is given here, uh, seven. So in any one year, you can see Mercury would be visible either in the east before sunrise or in the west after sunset. So there are seven windows which are available. Four on east, three on west, or vice versa. Three on east and four on west. And that is what he says as seven windows. And um, I have discussed this in detail, so I will not go into that. The important thing is about Venus. Venus is, of course, a bright planet. And people have said, oh, many people in ancient period, they did not know. It was the same planet which comes in the east and the same planet which comes in the west. But Parashara knew that. He says, Prakpratichyo, in the east and in the west, from the rise and setting, three paths, how to understand this he gives. And then also he says there are nine uh, directions to be followed. And in the nine directions, it is going to be invisible, becomes visible for 55, 65, 70, 81, 90 days. Then Venus having set in the west along the five paths, rises in the east after 6, 8, 12, 15, and 24 days. So he gives the how many days after setting in the east it rises, how many days after setting in the west it rises in the east. So if you take the average, I have taken only the average of this, it comes to about 584 days, 591 it actually comes. It is the synodic period of Venus would be 590 or 591 days. The modern value is 584. If you see that, this depends slightly on the latitude from where they were observing. These two are very close. But if 591 was a tithi, the two would be same. In fact, 591 tithi would be equal to 584 days. And similarly, you know, Brahaspati movement of Jupiter is given. Jupiter moves two and a quarter nakshatra in a year. Please note, he doesn't say it moves by one Rashi. It moves by two and a quarter nakshatra in a year. These are all visible nakshatras, not the modern astrological uh, nakshatras, which are counted from Mesha and simply marked to be in those Rashis. And again, Shaneshchara also gives Ashtavimshati Varshika, Saptavimshati Nakshatra Chara. It is about uh, 28 years uh, in 27 uh, nakshatras. That is its sidereal period. The most interesting thing is, of course, about the comets. So, Shatam Eko Taram Ketunam Bhavati, Tesham, Shodasha, etc. He um, relates this to the Vedic uh, statements, as it is said in the Veda. Even uh, Vridhagarga later on says, this is said in the Veda. Where, whereas you know that Dwadasha Aditya, Ekadasha Rudra, Daksha, these are all uh, Vedic names, Vibhavasu, there also it's a Vedic name. But anyway, what he says is, Tanamato Rupataha Palataha Tat Kalataha Abhidasya. He says, I, I will tell you the name, 
to tell you the rupa or the formation, phala, what is the effect, and tatkalata. What was the time when it happened? I'm going to state that. How, which are the 26 of them? When they rise, I'm going to tell that, he says. And he gives the names and all that. And it's, of course, a very long chapter. One of them you can see. Paita maha chalaketu panchadesha varsha shatam praushe udita. Panchadesha varsha shatam is not 1,500 years. There are additive numbers. Panchadesha, then shatam. You have to add these two. And it is going to be 115 years. So 115 years after the previous one, it rises. How? Paschimena in the West. Anguli Parvamatram, etc. It's very clear descriptions. And what is its orbit? He also said it looks like a trident. Moves close to the star of Brahma, generally taken to be Abhijit. Touches Dhruva, the pole star of those days, not the modern, our pole star. Then Brahma Rashi, then Saptarshi, then returns half the sky in the south. And it also says it, in the Madhya Desha, the central country, which was the Brahma Varta, the population is decreased. That means there is some disaster, maybe directly related to the comet, maybe some impacts of uh, you know, meteorites and others, or maybe because the sunlight got covered by the comet and uh, there is going to be drought and diseases. You don't know. But anyway, I prepared a table for all the 26 uh, comets. There is one extra here, Gada Ketu, which is due to Vridha Garga. And uh, all these 26, he gives the rise set location. Brief description is there, interval from the first epoch. And this first epoch, he calls it the Samplava. Samplava is, you know, is the flood. So Vasa Ketu rises 130 years after the flood, he says. What was the flood in India? That is actually the Matsya Avatara, the first flood, which comes up in the Shatapada Brahman. Of course, the, even the, there is, people say there is a biblical flood the third millennium BC, maybe, could be. But here it is quite clear. And if you take that Varahamihira was living somewhere in 1300, 1400, then we can easily relate this up to 2700 BC, 2600 or 700 BC. So I am, why I am showing this, there are people who claim that Indian uh, Indians, that is the Vedic people, actually, did not have a long count, whereas Mexicans had a long count of years, Aztecs had, Europeans had, Babylonians had. Uh, our people did not have is what they are telling. That is not true. There is actually a long count here. How good it is, how correct it is, okay, you can discuss, you can debate. But there is a long count of about 1,400 years, which takes us to very nearly the third millennium BC here. There are several other such things. I can't go into those, but this is what Parashara gives. So how did Parashara would have known if he was living in the middle of second millennium BC? There should have been a report or there should have been a, what I would call a, a text like a Vedic Brahmana. We should simply say after this many years, Kamani Ketu came, out, Kali Ketu came, out, Chala Ketu came. Actually, Vridha Garga gives that. See, Vridha Garga Jyotisha contains a full 200 verses which is something like a, a stotra, you can say. Like we say Vishnu Sahasram is stotra. There is a stotra of that, of the Ketu stotra. All the 26 uh, Ketus are listed. And he says the teacher should tell this to his shishya. And the shishya should repeat it along with the number of years in between. So we had a very good astronomical culture, which of course due to various reasons it deteriorated. I'm showing here one Harappan seal here which has three-headed um, animal. And, you know, we have the Trishira here, uh, a comet which has three heads. Is it possible? The Vedas also have a Trishika, which has uh, the, that is the Vishwarupa Vai Tvashtraha Tasya Trini Shir Shani, the three heads. Is there a relationship between the Vedic uh, comets or the Vedic mantras, Parashara's comet? And the Harappan Sea could be. This has to be investigated because this also roughly belongs to 2500, 2600 BC. Now, Agastya is the other uh, important thing. And a very uh, interesting thing happens here, which is of cultural interest. How the students are questioning their teacher. 
अतः भगवंत अमित यशस्म पराशर कौशिक अभ्युवाच भगवन याम यायाम दिशि ज्योतिषम ग्रह रूप मुदित आलक्ष्यते नक्षत्र ग्रह मार्ग व्युत्क्रांत चरित नवे सो दि हि स्टूडेंट बै नेम कौशिक पराशर देर इज समथिंग विच राइज इन दि सौथ एंड दट इज नाट अलांग दि एक्लिप्टिक ज्योतिषम ग्रह इट इज नाट लाइक दट इज लुक्स लाइक ए ग्रह and sometimes it it is nakshatra graha marga vitkranta it is not along the 27 nakshatra graha but uh, nakshatra ma- and graha marga but along the some something else why leaving the uh, uh, eastern side why it rises in the south only in the pravrat kala that is in the autumn that's after the rainy season also uh, why it uh, and then it it is seen for a few days and then it becomes uh, invisible you know even venus is like that rises in the east becomes invisible again rises in the west again becomes invisible so his question is that then there is a long chapter on this i will not go into that but varahamira you know derides that is why you see varahamira is important for our history of science but to think that he is the last word or he is the all in all and he is the pinnacle of indian science is a wrong notion i want to say this very forcefully because varaha mehra he says the planet lore of ancient he says it's all katha and it is of no value he says and he does not uh, say anything further he says it is only the teacher said this to amuse the student nothing more than that but fortunately utpala relates these stories because you know all our culture has come through stories and the puranas right from the vedic period the legends whatever legend you take and you know that's a very important way of transferring information and it is not always to be matter of fact and sanitized in a particular way uh, if it had been sanitized we would have missed our our civilization would not have come up to this stage still with the same way the vedic uh, oral tradition is still remaining in this country even though in other countries there was a oral tradition nobody has any oral tradition nowadays in europe or in other places now uh, uh, you know parashara says very interesting state hastaste savitari udeti rohini samste pravishat after explaining the legend of uh, agastya in a very long thing i have given in my book all of that he says when sun is in hasta nakshatra agastya rises when sun is in rohini nakshatra agastya sets because agastya is in the south now this can be shown to be correct but you can you read uh, the batotpalas vyakhyana on what uh, varamehra says varamehra also says see people ancient period they say hasta in hasta it rises and in rohini it sets and he also uses the word kila kila means something like that is being said and batotpala says parashara's condition is a utpata it is not correct because in uh, his period varahira period it was not like this but for 1400 bc parashara was on the dot correct see i am showing here two uh, stellarium pictures for th- minus 1300 1300 bc you can see canopus here and here in the east and you can see hasta is rising Uh, sun is still below the horizon hasta is rising hasta is above the horizon by about 6 degrees or 8 degrees and canopus is visible in the south and similarly here in the lower diagram um, sun is this is the west sun has set and here is rohini and uh, canopus is about to set in somewhere in february uh, this is in april i'm sorry 16th april whereas this is 21st september and there has been some work on agastya is very important for us because how does agastya come to us you know there are uh, seven rishis the saptarshis and agastya ashtamaha these are the eight gotras uh, from which all indians who belong to the veda have come uh, in this country who believe in the vedas and the taitiriya arnika says rishayah sapta trishchayate सर्वे अत्रयो अगस्त्यश्च नक्षत्रे शंकृतो अवसन व्हाट व्हाट इट सेस इज द सप्तर्षीज अलोंग विथ अगस्त्या आर लिविंग इन नियर द नक्षत्र दे हैव बिकम द नक्षत्र 
are living as the deities of the nakshatra. That is what it says. You can see the commentary of Sayana and others. That is how we, got, we have got a culture to identify Agastya as the star canopus. Now, Abhyankar has worked on this. It's due to precision, this star would not be visible always. So in the South India, it is visible quite well. But you can see in Greece, it is never visible. Even today, it will not be visible. If 38 degrees in Athens, it is not visible. Rome, 142 degrees north latitude, it is never visible. So they would not know about Agastya. And if they knew, that would be taken from others. The stories might have been borrowed from others and they may be telling. Damascus, that is Babylonia, it was visible. Kurukshetra, 30 degrees was visible. And one can show that in North India, that's around Kurukshetra region, from about 400 BCE, it would, that would have been very clearly visible. Maybe if you go to uh, 4,500 BC, also it may be slightly visible. And if you go north of that, it would not be true. So somewhere in the Kurukshetra region, you can see that the Vedic, the, you see in the first mandala of the Rigveda, there is Agastya is mentioned. There is some mantras related to Agastya and all that. And later the sutras also discuss Agastya. Can't go into those details. Puranas, of course, say that. And the Vedic Agastya became visible. I give two tables. Even in minus 3000, if you take four degrees altitude, if you reduce it, it will be visible even 3000 in Purukshetra. But I wanted Pushkara because Pushkara is where uh, Parashara did, his, uh, did all his work. That is the Brahma Kshetra. You know, you know, Pushkara is the Brahma Stana. It would have been visible in minus 3000. And hence, this is a very important information for our chronology. Just in passing, I want to mention, what did the Babylonians do? Because everybody nowadays, you know, there is a movement to say that all Vedic astronomy or whatever is in the Veda has come from the Babylonians. They will say even the Kritika starting is from the Babylonians and only the Vedic people have borrowed it. It's ridiculous and laughable. But you know, unless we work on our text and understand it, it won't be clear. Now, Babylonians say call Agastya, what we call Agastya as Nunki. And Nunki and constellation Hasta. Hasta is called Corvus in uh, present day astronomy. But they were calling it uh, Uga in uh, Babylonia. And you can see the paper of Van der Waarden, a famous uh, astronomer who has written the history of Babylonian astronomy, says he also says this was possible only in 1300 to 1000 BC. So if uh, Parashara has seen it in 1350, or he is given that condition, is slightly south of Babylonia. He was at 30 degrees. Pushkara is still below 29.5. He would have seen it even around 4000 BC. He could have, or maybe not Parashara, but the Vedic Rishis could have seen it. So we should not ignore this kind of information. And it is important for our own uh, you know, chronology. Now it's nearing 1230. Uh, Mr. Uh, yes, you can, you can, yes, sir. I'm watching the time. You can I take can maybe another five that? minutes. Yeah. Okay, okay. So there are other things like nakshatra sargam, nakshatra afflictions. These are actually occultations. There is also graha combination and all that one, uh, rashmi, hani, hevivarnyam and all that. But there is also full occultation is mentioned. And it's mentioned in a very peculiar way. He discusses the geometry of the stars, of the nakshatras. For example, Rohini, Praguttarena, Adya, Tara, Upasrishta. Praguttara would be North East. If the North East star is hurt, something happens. If the South East star is hurt, something happens. So that you know that uh, Rohini contains five stars and it looks like a triangle or a shakata. And similarly, you know, you, uh, there is a sarpa that is Ashlesha. Ashlesha also, he gives the uh, figure. The figure is uh, looks like a snake and he gives the six stars, the Northern star, Southern star, so the geometry he gives, this is something very rational and modern. And particularly for Maga, Maga is called the, the Devatas or the Pitras, is a very important uh, nakshatra for the Vedic people. In fact, Indra is called Magavan actually. And there are six stars. Which are the six stars? And in a Parasara discussion, it is like the Koshtagara, looks like a Prakara or a room. And these six stars I have shown here, 
in the in the slide and he says the northern one southern one the corner one if they are hurt what happens this is a very scientific person and he also gives something on the nadi nakshatra pidapala this is the natal astrology which uh, parashara tantra actually perhaps was following it is not the rashi kind of horoscopic astrology but the nakshatra in which a person was born what happens uh, if that uh, natal nakshatra is affected by a planet and then manasa is the star from which the birth star is fourth then the 16th is called sangajikam and if these are affected what are the results this can only a visible nakshatra darsha could do it is not on a diagram but actually for each person this would change and hence somebody has to see the star and know his uh, janma nakshatra and then predict it he also gives a shanti uh, like in modern times you know the gra shanti nakshatra shanti is done he discusses the nakshatra shanti how it should be done and he also gives the panchagavya panchagavya has to be used for some particular thing and some particular abhishek has to be done and rudra japa has to be done and all that so this is something which has come to which has come to us before the horoscopic astrology so people uh, the modern astrologer should not mistake me there is something to trace from the original concept of nadi nakshatra there is the janma nakshatra and then going to the lagna and then going to the modern uh, uh, kind of uh, you know horoscopes now there is a long chapter on uh, raimfa in fact uh, uh, varaha mihra has taken large amount of information from this text only varaha mihra gives the number of uh, uh, drona of rainfall which comes starting from the first nakshatra in which the rainfall occurs and how much to be predicted for the whole season this is he has taken from parashara and i given a list here the 27 nakshatra starting from kritika if the first nakshatra on that day was 10 drona for the whole season you have to predict 64 centimeters uh, 64 dronas of rainfall like that can't go into the details i made a comparison with the modern probability density function because i've been working on seasonal rainfall of these places starting jaipur dar ujjain and see these how the modern if i assign a probability for this how it may look like they they cannot be exactly same but the variation is same this is a 42% variability Uh, jaipur even today and here it is about 38% variability as per parashara the mean value of course we do not know in fact there is another work which i have done on rainfall cycles in ancient sanskrit texts we already published in 2009 parashara also and in fact krishi parashara which is again attributed to parashara discusses the rainfall cycles five years three years three year cycle is very important because it is connected with the synodic period of uh, venus in fact parashara in the beginning itself says the vedic relation that uh, shukra is one who can control arka varsha nirodhanam arka varsha nigrahanam Shuk- shukra can do others will not do is what he says also there is a, a earthquake uh, uh, regions which occur in india he says the vayu agni indra varuna four types vayu is the strongest varuna is the least and he gives the regions which are affected so i prepared a map you can see the four colors red green and all of that and this is something like a zoning map of india and you can see south india there are very few even today this is how the if you see this is mixed zoning map of india it is available on the web you can see there are only four zones and people are struggling to make it more and more uh, scientific you can see that 2000 years ago we already had this whether they used it or not i don't know but the scientists had looked at this information now the last i am coming to the end they also has something on swapna and the important thing is this trividham darshanam he says apartakam yathartham anyartham there are three kinds of uh, uh, dreams uh, which have no purpose there is no meaning with correct meaning and with some other meaning he discuss all of that and the very important thing is manohi nidra nihita tatva vijnana is a great uh, psychological statement nidra nihita tatva vijnanam uh, whatever it is in the sleep 
It is connected with one's mind. And he discusses this in great detail, how it has to be done, how you have to do a divination of the, uh, uh, you know, the portents and all that. Well, I am sum summing up my thing. Um, Parashara uh, statements can be used to find the starting date of this tantra. That means it's a tradition. Now, I cannot say whether this Parashara was the father of uh, Veda Vyasa. I cannot say whether this Parashara is the author of the Parashara Hora. To the extent I have compared, there is no matching, except in some eclipse statements, there is a matching. Otherwise, the, of the available Parashara Hora, there is no matching. But this would have started in our country somewhere around 1400 BC. This is actually the original Vedanga Jyotisha. Now, people simply say Lagada is the Vedanga Jyotisha and all that. That is not true. Because mathematical astronomy follows observational astronomy. The observational astronomy of uh, Parashara was followed by Vridhagarga and then later by Lagada. But uh, there is only Nakshatra, Titi, Karana and Muhurta in Parashara. Uh, there are no weekdays and there are no Rashis also available in Parashara. Give so many things. The most important thing which uh, appealed to me was the penumbral eclipse, which was uh, not known to, which people say Siddhantik Asanamas did not know. And also Siddhantik Asanamas never bothered about comets. Um, but this person had observed all of them and discusses them in greater detail. So, and in fact, Parashara also says the same comet may be coming repeatedly at unknown intervals. You know, there are periodicities for comets nowadays. Halley's comet at 80 years, or 78 years. So he suspects and mentions it may be coming, he says. The legend of Agastya, the Vedic says, is unique to Indian culture and history. I urge people to look at this in greater detail. Parashara gives the condition which is apt for 1300 BC plus or minus 100 years. And Varahmir and Utpala's comment on this is obviously wrong. He says, this is Utpata and Varahmihira had no idea of observational nature of Vedic natural sciences. He was extremely mathematical. He did his observations of Jain, I agree. But ancients might have done observation and due to precision it might have changed. He did not know and he doesn't mention anything of that. Or at least in the books that what we have got now, we don't have any reference to that. But these were all correct. All information given in Parashara Tantra, what I have collected, is correct for about 1400 BC. And my appeal is, is extremely important, which has been overlooked by historians and astronomers, entered in ancient chronology and origin of Hindu astronomy and astrology both. Because from the anomaly of the uh, planets, anomaly in the eclipses, anomalous phenomenon, astrology has developed. At least as far as the Vedic uh, relation with uh, Parashara is concerned. So people who are interested in Hindu astrology, the history of Hindu astrology, starting from Veda, instead of bothering about, uh, I mean, uh, arguing that Rashi, the word is there, Rashi in Veda, of course, is a Sanskrit word, but these Rashis were there also, instead of arguing like that, see the ancient text and a new history, very systematic history of astrology can also be developed. So thank you very much. I thank, uh, th this is what I call scientific naturalism. So scientific naturalism is what has been given by Parashara to us. Thank you so much. There are any questions I would be happy. happy so thank you very much, sir, uh, for this wonderful talk uh, and taking us along the Parashara Tantra. There are a couple of questions from me uh, before I take a few questions from the viewers as well. So one such question I had was in the solar season zodiac, which you mentioned, sir, the breakup of the seasons was into padas, the nakshatra padas, as you mentioned by Parashara Tantra. But what's your view about the unequal distribution of the nakshatra vyapti? Because as we know, Ashlesha is a longer one, as you just mentioned, that how do you divide that into this nine uh, uh, padas of the nakshatras and the seasons together? So how, what's your view on that? No, okay, let me say that. The nine padas in each nakshatra is not mentioned. What I said was four and a half nakshatras, four and a half nakshatras per season, per season of 61 days, sun moves by four and a half nakshatras. And what Parashara gives, the beginning of the season and the end of the season, what nakshatra was visible. In between, he doesn't say anything. 
They might be equal, they might be unequal. Yes, you are correct. May be possible. So I have taken only the end uh, nakshatras, but I have divided into equal nakshatras. You are right. I, um, that will make me a very long story. But to cut it down, let me say, in the Nidana Sutra of the Samaveda, there, in the Gavamayana discussion, the sun movement is given, and they have taken it to be 13 and 5 by 9 days. That is, the year length is taken as 366 days, and it, they have divided it by 27, and he says that sun moves by in each nakshatra for 13 and 5 by 9 days. Now, Parashara doesn't say anything exactly on that. So I have taken it equal. Vruddha Garga actually gives unequal. Not for sun, but for moon. Now, Parashara does not say anything on moon. The moon might have been difficult in 1500 BC. So they haven't said anything on moon other than the eclipses and the six monthly eclipse. If you see the text, uh, he says, Utpala also says, Balala Sena says, Parasharana noktam. Chandracharya para Chandrotpati Chandrachar Parasharana noktam. Only the eclipses are said. So the unequal nakshatra could have been. And in fact, I showed a table where we took 83 stars to work out, but it was still equal nakshatra division. Unequal nakshatra might have been there. That's important for some other purposes. But here, you know, even if I make it unequal, I have found we have done that exercise. It goes a little bit 100 years before, but there is no evidence for me to make it unequal. I see. Sure. Sir. That was one. And another question which has uh, struck to my mind was because uh, Vedavya Sabharati Trust has done a work, a Vedic seminar on Brihat Parasara Hora, uh, sorry, Brihat Samhita of Varahamira. And uh, there we did discuss about the topic on Saptarishi Chara, which is also one of the prominent topics. And I didn't see a mention about it in your book. So I was just keen. Yes, so yes. You yes, did touch on the yes, Ketus. Yes, yes. Very good. Very good. In fact, I have written this. There is no Saptarishi Chara mentioned in the available text. If the original manuscript was available of a Parashara Tantra, we could have seen that. Whether there is a Saptarshi Chara. There is a Dhruvadya Bhutani in uh, Balala Sena's text. But it doesn't say anything on, uh, he gives the Saptarshi region deities for the different regions. The movement he doesn't mention. And uh, in fact, this is one of the reasons why I collected about 15 manuscripts of Vridhagargiya Jyotisha. None of the Vridhagargiya Jyotisha discuss Saptarshi Chara. There is no Adhyaya on that. Now, only Varahamira is the earliest person I can see who gives the Saptarshi Chara. The, later on, the others are mentioning, even the Puranas mention, the Brahmanda Purana and a few other Puranas mention Saptarshi Chara, but these people don't mention. There seems to be a very, very interesting and important uh, hiatus in our uh, astronomical observations and textual transmission that has to be worked out. And the manuscripts have been edited by people who thought this may not be right. So they removed it. So what is it we can do? So in the Parashara Tantra also, there is nothing on this. Even in the Vridhagargi Josusha, there is no Saptarshichara. Right. Sir, I would request if you can uh, close the screen presentation so that uh, we can have this, continue the discussion. There are a couple of questions from the viewers. So there is a, uh, from one of our viewers, Rajat Vasudeva Murti. Sir, you mentioned that Shukra Chara would be discussed after Aditya Chara earlier, but Varaha Mehra discusses later in the order. Any particular reason for that? So do you see any re reason no, why Shukra Chara? Yeah, I think they all took it in the weekday system, you know. So the weekday system has come up after about 180 or so. Uh, in fact, even in the Vridhagargya Jyotisha, the discussion is only um, Shukra and then the others. Shukra is the Prathamograha. That is what even um, uh, some of the Puranas say. And the Vridhagargya Jyotisha, there is a very ancient uh, chapter called the Mahasalila Dhyaya. Mahasalila Dhyaya is actually a Vedic text. And that says Shukra was the first barn. And then Brihaspati was barn. And Buddha was a Panchama. Panchama, the fifth was Buddha. That is how it says, gives the Vyutpati or the birth of the planets. So after the weakness came, this has changed. Sure. 
there is another question uh, from another viewer, uh, Sundar Chakravarti ji. Full penumbral eclipse leading to total eclipse mentioned in Mahabharata. Is it a very infrequent occurrence? Oh, <laughs> I think Sundar, you are better uh, you know, equipped to verify that. It seems to be uh, infrequent because as I said, the six monthly system itself, tetrads are rare and they repeat at 591 year interval, uh, increasing and decreasing. And penumbral, total penumbral becoming total lunar should also be rare. And in fact, in Mahabharata, Vyasa says, the, now I see that the eclipses are occurring too often nowadays. There is one shlok I forget. There are too many eclipses are occurring in this season or in this, maybe in that year or what he says. And uh, seems to be something there. Possibly it has to be verified. Sure, sir. Another question from my end, uh, as I mentioned about the Brahat Parashara Hora Shastra as well, assuming that it is the same Parashara. So, do you did you come across any reference about the Maitreya Rishi? Because Brahat Parashara Hora Shastra talks a lot about the conversation between Parashara and Maitreya. And you did mention about one of the uh, disciples of Parashara, which was mentioned. So, did you come across anything about Maitreya in your references? No, sir. I have not come across Maitreya. I have come across, in fact, in the ancient texts, Gautama, Kaushika, of course, Vishwamitra and others are there. Kroshtuki, I have come across, not in Parashara, but in Vridhagargaya Jyotisha. But Maitreya, I have not come across. Not come across, sure, sir. No. And there is another question from our viewers, uh, Varija Adiga. Sir, is there any link between Vridhagarga and Parashara, one referencing the other to define the chronology? Or do we get the names of these riches from Varahamihira's Brahat Samhita? So, <laughs> it's a very interesting, intriguing question. Actually, I was also looking for that. In the Vridhagargi Jyotisha, it doesn't mention anything about Parashara. But it gives the same Aditya Chara. Whatever Parashara has given, the same thing is given. The difference is Vridhagarga, as it is available to us now, it may not be the most ancient Vridhagarga. But it may be one of his disciples that is in uh, verse form, that is like a poetry. Whereas Parashara is strictly prose. Some of his uh, Parashara statements have been converted into verses by his students and also in uh, Balala and even uh, you know, Varahamira. They may write it like that because they did not think the way that we do. The same information, instead of putting it in prose, they would have put it in uh, poetry. No, that is the standard way they were doing. But uh, the name is not there. Like you see, I have uh, Parashara Tantra, as I showed you. Uh, Varahamira himself uses that. And hence, we can believe that Parashara Tantra was a older text than this. And uh, Vridhagarga is also quoted by Varahamira. And between the two, if you compare, Vridhagarga seems to be later. There are so many other reasons uh, we have to discuss it in greater detail. Yeah. So one last question I'll take from the viewers. So Vajadeva Ji, what about application of Krishi Parashara for every year? Has it been done? So what uh, is it, name, sir? So what about application of Krishi Parashara for uh -huh. every year? Has it already oh. been done? So because you just heard about who, who is the questioner? Uh, Vajadeva. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, as of now, I don't think anybody is applying these principles. There may be some communities which will be doing. I'm not aware of it. But the Krishiparashara information is scientific, that much I can say. The cycles which are mentioned uh, and the cycles which we have verified, I personally verified some of the cycles, they are all true. But the cycles doesn't mean that they will precisely repeat like that. That once in five year cycle means uh, if there is a flood, once in five years, there is going to be a flood. The probability is higher. So if you look at it from a statistical point of view, and the ancients also say that they don't insist it is deterministic, as in English we would call today as deterministic, with probability one. It is not like that. Everything, even starting from the Vedic period, if you see, there would be somewhat like that. There can be something more, there can be something less, and that is how the periodicity is also mentioned. But I haven't come across any 
strong thing other than there is one book which is from the ikrisat you know in hyderabad uh, international you know crop research center there they have translated uh, krishu parashara into english but there are some mistakes in the solar nakshatra and the lunar nakshatra they have mistaken the nakshatra given for lunar nakshatra they are not because very clear from the shatavada brahmana period it is only the sun who controls the rainfall and sun who controls the ritus also so it is the solar nakshatra if you take they are reasonably correct that much i can say but these nakshatras are observable nakshatras not the nakshatras which are today given in the panchangas because the panchangas do not consider the precession into effect the 21 day shift it doesn't consider into effect but if we include that you get the right answer that that, that is what i can say that right and krishi parashara is more used as well in the brukshayar veda uh, purposes of the application as well in the farming and other areas ah, one yeah. of the talks we had on the series as well uh, so one of yeah, yeah. krishna parashara is a very good text very fact, i would say yeah i gone through that in great detail and they were very realistic people village people what was because the culture was a village based culture and how it should be done what should be done and how to expect the rainfall how the sowed the seed has to be sown all that is given and even the 18 year cycle and you know the pani chakra which comes up in the later text He is actually an eighteen-year uh, sa- what we call the Saro cycle nowadays, mm-hmm. which is already there in Krishna Parashara also. That is right. true. Wonderful. And one more mention uh, because Guruji did speak a lot about Varaha Mira's work, and uh, he also mentioned because uh, that is one thing which I felt was not totally aligned from the way you presented, because Varaha Mira did stress about the Druk uh, Panchanga because I mean he always mentioned that. please look into the current times of the nakshatras as well as the overall uh, planet and their position yeah sorry there was a technical disturbance i think with this we will conclude today's session sir on behalf of international institute of vedic sciences rishivartika i would like to thank Uh, dr r n ayengar ji for this great introduction talk on ancient text parashara tantra and we will conclude this talk thank you sir once again and thanks to all our viewers who have been following us in this lecture series and if you have not yet subscribed to this channel please do subscribe for the latest notifications hari om tat tat thank you sir thank you so much